Good morning and welcome to the Church of St. Gregory the Great. Let us sing together our opening hymn, number 139, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. That's hymn number 139. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We welcome you, brothers and sisters, especially also those joining us on live stream. For this beginning of our Holy Week celebrations, this most sacred time of the liturgical year, especially the, the Triduum, which we uh, await and prepare for, the as we enter into the, the suffering, death, and, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We follow in his footsteps this week. We, we focus on him. We see all that he does for us out of love for us, that he is willing to even die for us on the cross. So we praise our Lord today who enters triumphantly into Jerusalem, uh, knowing also that he comes into the Jerusalem as the suffering servant uh, to die for us, to die for his people, and to rise again for us. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first call to mind our sins trusting in God's mercy.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield, from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. lips 
they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Divide my garments among them, and my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me, O oh, my help, hasten to aid. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, 
and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, 
Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, This very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, Do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath. 
For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out against the robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, he deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him while some slapped him saying, prophesy for us Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money but said, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, who questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. 
And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead. He took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sebaktani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit.
And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, he entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day after pre of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day. Lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Truly, this was the Son of God, the centurion said as he stood at the foot of the cross. His life was turned around just by being in Jesus' presence, just by looking at the cross, the cross with its magnetic power, to use the phrase of William Barclay. Just by looking upon it, he believed. He was a Gentile, a pagan, yet even he believed. Truly, this was the Son of God. That's a remarkable statement when you think about it. He's looking at a man, a God-man, dying on a cross in a cruel form of death. Yet he believed. We come to Mass or stop in the church regularly and just, like the centurion, look upon the cross and never seem to grasp completely its power, its profundity, the fact that God is willing to make himself so humble, so low, that he dies for the sins of the people that he created. The centurion was the first fruit, the first to convert at the cross, and many more would follow him down through history. But the cross has always been there and always will be. This is the reason for the motto of the Carthusian order, the cross is steady while the world turns. In his statement we say today with full faith and conviction with ardent love and fervor, we say it together, truly this was the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you this week simply to be in the presence of Jesus to pay attention to his words, to pray, to think about his passion and death, his, the priesthood and Eucharist that he instituted, the Last Supper, to be with him when he suffers in the Garden of Gethsemane, even sweating blood, the way of the cross, the Last Supper, how he loved us to the end on the cross. He is the suffering servant, the king whose kingdom is not of this world, as he says to Pilate. 
As Pope Emeritus Benedict said in his book about Holy Week, Jesus is a unique king, a king of peace, a king of simplicity, a king of the poor. And we follow him in his mission of sharing truth, mercy, forgiveness. What does he say from the cross? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. His ministry of healing and comfort, giving hope, helping people to have faith, to believe in a loving God, to defeat the powers of darkness and evil, to give peace, to help people in bearing their burdens. The love of God is something people need more than ever right now. As we suffer through a pandemic, as an entire world, as a community, But the love of God is there, and those who are are serving others, God is there. God is with those who are suffering. The cross tells us that. But it's also something that people have always needed and will always need. Jesus Christ is good news. He is healing and he is life. St. Andrew of Crete says, let us run to accompany him, not by covering his path with olive branches or palms, but by doing all we can to prostrate ourselves before him, by being humble, by trying to live as he would wish. Let us spread before his feet ourselves. Let our souls take the place of the welcoming branches. And this week ahead in the story of Holy Week, we will see light and darkness. We'll see those who follow Jesus with fidelity as well as those who will betray him and those who will flee. Who will you be? Who will I be? Which character? Will we have enough faith to continue to believe? And may we say with great joy and conviction like the centurion, surely this man was the son of God. Let us now pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing that Jesus is our merciful and compassionate King, we present our needs. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he lead the Church more deeply into the Paschal mystery in ritual and in life as we journey through suffering to glory, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the Church in this time of confusion and uncertainty, grant us guidance and strength in our faith, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, may they be guided by the Holy Spirit during this worldwide pandemic, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For those who are preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation, may they be convinced that only by sharing in Christ's suffering and death can they have a share in his glorious resurrection, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick or suffering from the coronavirus, May they be embraced in the healing mercy of the Lord. And may those who continue to work for the common good in this difficult and uncertain time be filled with wisdom and understanding and remain safe, we pray. 
Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all our faithful departed, may everyone who in life belong to Christ rest in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection on the last day. We remember Roland Morton and Peggy Ann O'Neill Kiernan, who recently died, and we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, although we cannot gather as the assembly of the faithful, may the Lord hear our voice and be attentive to the prayer of his people, and may we each search our heart and pray for guidance to be a light to others during this worldwide crisis, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pause to add our own intentions and those remembered in our parish prayer book. And we pray, Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we pray that our Lenten prayer, fasting and almsgiving may bear fruit in helping us recognize the great work into which we are invited. As we walk in Jesus on this journey to the cross, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together hymn 148, O Sacred Head Surrounded. That's hymn 148. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. 
for the praise and glory of Christ, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. So that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished with the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
We invite each of you during communion as you look on from home and are not able to receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist to make a spiritual communion expressing your great love and your great desire for the Lord Jesus Christ. A spiritual communion prayer can be found on our parish website below the live stream. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, enter. but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be done. By Christ, you can seek your child. Please join in hymn 152. Were you there? That's hymn 152.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. I have several announcements. Palms will be blessed and made available to you at a later date when there is no longer a risk of spreading the coronavirus. This upcoming week, we invite you to join us as we live stream the liturgies of Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. Please see our webpage for the scheduled times as we celebrate the Triduum. Do you know someone who is in need of food during this pandemic? Please share with them the information on our website about our parish food pantry. And please keep up to date with parish announcements by frequently checking our parish website. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look, we pray, O oh Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Now let us pray together the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 702, Take Up Your Cross. That's hymn 702. Mm -hmm. 